In the late 70s, a computer wizard and a business genius founded a startup in, where else, a basement in California, producing and selling the first personal computers. At first, people laughed at banana computers. <laughs> but when their computers and gadgets turned out to be powerful, easy to use, beautiful, and huge profit makers, the giggles were muffled. Within a few decades, Banana had become the world's most valuable company, admired by technology and design fans and investors alike. Of course, the two founders didn't do everything alone. Banana grew in Silicon Valley, a technology ecosystem built in part by the U.S. government, which provided generous funds, subsidies, and tax breaks. Thousands of brilliant employees graduated from top universities in the U.S. and abroad were part of the success, while millions of loyal customers bought their products. So naturally, Banana was prepared to give something back in return. They paid taxes in the U.S. and abroad, made sure that salaries kept their real value, and, also as a matter of pure self-interest, invested their profits back into research to develop even better gadgets in the future. Unfortunately, this story is about a fictitious company. And yes, the real global corporation that you may have been reminded of, Apple, has made billions of profits since the turn of the millennium. But they did that by offshoring their production to low-wage countries where subcontractors like Foxconn have workers in appalling conditions. And they did it by finding truly innovative ways to avoid paying taxes. Different branches of the company made use of different tax rules in the US and Ireland so that they don't have tax residency anywhere. But a more refined trick would be the double Irish with a Dutch sandwich, which goes like this. To avoid paying federal taxes in the United States, you start a subsidiary in Ireland. If you transfer patents to the Irish branch, you can pay your subsidiary royalties for these patents. These will be deductible in the United States, so you don't have to pay taxes there. And at the same time, they'll be taxed at much lower rates according to Irish law. An additional bizarre legal loophole means that if the Irish subsidiary is controlled from an outside tax haven, the profits can be transferred tax-free to that tax haven, where they can sit untaxed, invisible to authorities for years. Sales from outside of the United States can be routed over a second Irish subsidiary via the Netherlands and back to Ireland. As a result, Apple is currently sitting on a staggering offshore pile of cash worth almost $200 billion that cannot be used to increase wages or invest into research and development, because doing that would mean that the money must be brought back into the United States where it would be taxed. Instead, the money is invested into financial instruments and international financial markets, making Apple more of a fund manager than a technology company. However, Apple does remember some of their dues, those they have to their shareholders. In fact, while sitting on the largest pile of money in history, Apple recently borrowed billions to pay their shareholders, again using financial engineering to avoid paying taxes. But Apple is not the only one. In a process called financialization, more and more of corporations' financial resources are invested in international financial markets rather than in the real economy. These are the same financial markets, incidentally, that plunged the world into crisis in 2008. All of this pent-up money has to earn its keep somehow. So it's lent to consumers and governments whose debts are increasing, partly because the corporate income taxes and the share of wages in the economy have declined. Apple is far from the only multinational corporation behaving this way. But, like banana computers, any of these corporations could also decide to pay their fair share of taxes, they could pay decent wages to the employees that have helped make their success, and they could reinvest their profits into research, just like the late Steve Jobs preferred. And while Ireland and the Netherlands engage in a competitive race to the bottom, lowering taxes and enacting ridiculous tax laws, they too are not the only ones. Instead, governments should fix tax schemes and labor regulations and promote real investment opportunities instead of tax havens. This would help deflate the huge bubble of offshore cash outside of national economies, which is threatening global financial stability. And it may even save Apple to the delight of tech and design snobs the world over.